Thank you everyone for joining our session today. And today we are talking about the Kubernetes, sports, securities, and policy stuff. And you heard about these things that Kubernetes 1.21 is uh, going to be removing the port security stuff from itself. And they want somebody else that they have their capabilities and knowledge on managing the security things and they can put their stuff on top of it without being we doing this kind of this one after one one kubernetes 1.21 the board security policy is deprecated and i've seen the whole lot of this communication and discussion around these kind of stuff i'm really happy i'm joined by a team that's created a tool called kai verno and today i'm shooting Zhao and Jim Bavardia. They are both from Kaiverno maintainers and they give you the insight of what the Kubernetes policies are and how do you manage with using Kaiverno. So thanks for everyone who are joining. You can ask questions, put them in the chat and at the end of the session, I ask I both ask all your question to shooting and Jim and hopefully they answer your all your queries and at the end of the session you will get up to speed on port security policies, Kubernetes security kind of stuff and Kaiverno stuff as well. So thank you shooting and Jim for joining and head over to shooting and yes. Hey, um, thanks Sam. Hello, everybody. This is Shooting Zhao. Um, I helped create Kiverno and I'm now currently maintaining the project. So today, Jim going to start with an introduction of Kiverno, give you some ideas of what Kiverno does, and uh, then compare the post security policy. Then I'll have a few more examples of how Kiverno policy looks and how it works. All right. Um, Jim, do you want to start from the beginning? Yeah, so hi everyone, this is Jim and you know, maybe, maybe we can just start with a quick introduction to Kiverno and we'll certainly like uh, Siam also asked, like we'll go deeper into pod security and what that means and some of the alternatives and how you can prepare uh, for the deprecation and, and some we'll talk about some options being developed also natively in Kubernetes and how those would work. So. Yeah, so just to kind of, you know, quick overview of Kiverno, um, we'll start with, you know, why we created Kiverno, what it does, and then go into how it works, etc. cetera. Um, so Kiverno, just in terms of, you know, um, like one common question that comes up, it was, does the name even mean? So it uh, means governance or govern as a verb. Uh, so it's governance for Kubernetes. That's the kind of meaning behind it. But really the whole idea was to create uh, a simple way of, you know, validating and even generating mutating configurations for Kubernetes, right? So as you know, Kubernetes configuration management um, is declarative in, in nature, right? So um, if Kubernetes configurations can be fairly complex because there's a lot of details you can specify and how you desire your end state to be. But you can, you know, because uh, there's so much configuration, there's also sometimes a, a you know, challenge of who should do what, right? Because maybe think about a deployment and, you know, a pod definition. Your developers, of course, will want to specify things like ports, things like memory resources, maybe, you know, uh, other things like probes and health checks. But your operator might want to specify, you know, things like node selectors, right? Uh, because they are the ones who understand the cluster layout. So how do you do this in a, you know, in a cohesive manner, in an automated manner, without everybody stepping on each other's toes? And that's where policies become important. And whether you're using something like Rego and OPA, or if you're using Kiverno, we believe that every cluster should have some policy management tool and have some way of making it simpler to manage configurations at scale. Yeah, so talking more about Kiverno itself and, you know, the difference there between that and something like OPA, Rego or uh, other tools. So the whole idea was to make it very simple to, to you know, do policies um, and, you know, make policies also declarative like Kubernetes configurations. And also, you know, one of the things we saw is it's not enough to just validate or, you know, enforce or block configurations. 
but to take advantage of Kubernetes and to fully automate, um, you know, behaviors that you want, it's important to be able to mutate and generate. So Kiverno from the very beginning, you know, uh, has supported mutate and also generate capabilities, which leads to a very powerful combination of things. Like for namespaces, you can say, okay, my namespaces need to have a certain label, but then when a new namespace is created, based on the label, I can generate a particular set of configurations, I can customize it, and all of this can be automated now between you know, the developers and the operators, and it just makes that, you know, the workflow very cohesive. So in many ways, and it's interesting to see some of the workflows coming up in the community, like if you have, you know, a PCI label, maybe you again want to, you know, make sure that your workloads have such a particular thing set, like you might want a node selector, or you might want certain, you know, uh, storage classes to be used for PCI workloads, right? Things like that now is possible to automate, which was just very complex to do before and enforce before uh, without Kiverno. Yeah, so just, you know, of course, one question which always comes up, and I think, uh, Sam, you were also asking about this, is, okay, Rego or uh, Kiverno, or which one should I use? Uh, why are there two different things, you know? Uh, so, so our whole, you know, uh, approach here was make it easy. So, of course, if you're familiar with Rego, if you write software all the time and want to learn a new language, that's great. I mean, uh, there, there is value that OPA can provide and Rego can provide. Um, you can also, the other advantage of using something like OPA is it works with other systems outside of Kubernetes. So if you want to write policies like for AWS or something else, you potentially can. Uh, but if you're solving this problem for Kubernetes and you want a simple native solution which works with all the Kubernetes tool sets, uh, like customize, like, you know, GitOps, uh, and just you want to manage policies as Kubernetes resources, then we believe Kiverno is, you know, a good alternative and the best choice. Uh, and you can see just like trying to read the two definitions. Uh, it's much simpler if you understand what a pod looks like, you will know how to write a Kiverno policy, right? Uh, the learning curve is much reduced, much simpler. Yeah, so this is, you know, the basics of what a policy looks like and, and each policy has like a match and exclude block uh, and will have some mutate, validate, generate rules uh, and, you know, like based on the action you want to take. Uh, and the match and exclude can be on a lot of different things on the kinds, the namespace, even things like usernames, user groups. So giving a lot of, you know, flexibility, we uh, recently added a namespace selector. Um, and, you know, you can, so based on the namespace that resource is going to, you can also do certain things um, in your policy, right? So lots of flexible ways, as you'll see with some of the examples. In, in when you install Kiverno within your cluster itself, you know, the way it works is it uh, installs as an admission controller. So basically with, uh, with Kubernetes, of course, everything flows through your API server, and the API server has, has a mutating as well as a validating webhook. So this is very powerful because you can now mutate configurations as they're at the entry point, as they're being, you know, before they're persisted in etcd, and you can also validate configurations, and Kiverno registers both. Uh, for generate policies, what happens is the trigger can be through the webhook, so when some other object is created, but then the actual action runs in the background after the resource is created. So let's say if the namespace is the trigger, then you know the Kiverno will detect that a namespace is created. It will create you know a, a custom resource underneath to track that namespace creation, and then after the namespace is created, it will go ahead and generate the resources for that namespace. So it could be the same with the pod, with the service, uh, with other objects, but that's how the generate works and the validate and mutate are applied, could be applied in real time or could be also done uh, as background scans. 
So more another example of you know a, a policy. So this one is checking. Uh, it is actually a pod security policy. So it'll check for uh, root user. And what's interesting here is it's checking for two different things, right? Within a pod spec, if you have run as root set to true, uh, or within a container, if you have you know the security context in a container, if you have run as true root set to as non root set to true. So either one of those will pass the policy that's why it's called the any pattern on line 14 so just providing more flexibility for what type of checks uh, you want to do within your yaml declarations itself right but again pretty simple and straightforward you know not much is required to read this and understand what the policy is trying to do i actually can talk about the Mutate validation sure. generate later. Why don't you uh, dive directly dive into the pod security policy? Okay, yeah, let's do that. Um, if you want to switch to that section. Yeah, so one of the questions and I think a topic for the agenda was, you know, pod security and, you know, what Giverno does there, what's going on. So like, like, you know, as I mentioned, pod security policies, PSPs are being marked for deprecation. Um, and that means that in three releases or so, they will be removed after that, right? So in 1.21, which is the next release coming out, they'll be marked for deprecation. Uh, you can continue using them, but they'll be deprecated. And the idea is to give folks some time to find a replacement. So one of the things that's happening in the community is there's already, by the way, an existing document called pod security standards. And it's uh, it's something if you just search for Kubernetes pod security standards, um, it shows, you know, this uh, three levels of pod security called privilege, baseline and restricted. And PSPs are an implementation of that standard. So there are there are discussions going on to create a cap to also you know, create a new implementation, which removes some of the problems that PSPs had, but then to allow that to apply at the namespace level. So using namespace labels, you can then apply you know, pod security levels to a particular namespace. So whether a namespace is privileged, whether namespace is baseline, which means that I want some security, but I'm not gonna be highly restricted, and then by default, you could say, okay, other namespaces are highly restricted. So that's being developed. We don't have a timeline or anything on when exactly that will be available or if the cap will be accepted. So there's a lot of discussions and things going on in the community about that. But in the meanwhile, you know, the choice is available. And of course, everybody who's running a production cluster should be, you know, securing things at the pod level, right? I mean, pods are... Uh, the basic unit of deployment execution. And I think if you've seen some of the, there's some great videos and sessions out there. If you have a pod running with privilege mode, and if you, you know, allow things like host path, um, it's extremely easy for somebody to run, even if you don't allow, you know, if your pods are secure, if you haven't locked down your namespaces, somebody could, you know, who can, you know, who maybe gets access to that cluster, um, through some other mechanisms, can run another privileged workload, get access to your host, and do some pretty, you know, um, sort of uh, clever hacks through that, right? So there are, you know, there is a real security, you know, challenge with making sure that your uh, your clusters and your workloads are configured properly, and that's what with Kiverno and with uh, other similar tools our goal is to make that secure by default, right? So instead of, you know, Kubernetes being insecure by default, how do we make sure that it's very easy to make it secure by default, even when you bring up a new cluster? So using best practices like GitOps and customize, and uh, even if you're using something like Flux, you can pull down your Kiverno policies just as part of when that cluster first bootstraps. Uh, and then from there on, only secure workloads will be deployed. So we'll we'll see, you know, I think we have a demo for looking at what Kiverno does. So we can also take a look at that in action and um, and then look at some of the other capabilities of, you know, of Kiverno. So shooting, if you want to 
do that or I could share you know on my cluster either way okay I'll stop sharing and let you do the demo okay so actually I think I already have let me share my desktop and then I'll uninstall Kiverno and reinstall it just so that everybody sees how that works and All right, so let me switch to my command line. And I think I do have Kiverno running here. So what I'm going to go to the do is go to actually the docs, the Kiverno docs, and we'll just look at. So by the way, if you go to the Kiverno docs, go to policies, you'll see pod security. You can kind of see, um, you know, um, the different the two what I was talking about, the pod security standards. So there's a link there. So definitely read through this because it's uh, very interesting. It tells you all of the controls for pod security and what exactly should happen uh, to to you know kind of satisfy that control. So there's a lot of different configurations, like you can see here. So it can be fairly you know daunting at not, but I'll show you how easy it is with Kiverno to kind of uh, get started, right? So I have Kiverno installed and I have pod security policies installed. So what I'm actually going to do, I'll remove them and reapply them, right? Just to show you what the whole flow. So let's actually just copy this command from here. It's running customize on this repo, and then it's applying those. Um, and But instead of apply, I'm going to just say delete first, and then we'll kind of go and do a quick test. So it takes a few seconds to pull down all of the YAMLs, and then it told me, okay, I deleted all of this, um, you know, from from my cluster. So now, if I look, you know, in my cluster, I I say kubectl, let's say, get namespace. I have Kiverno running. If I do get cpol is a short form for cluster policy, it will say there's nothing, you know, installed, nothing found, right? So at this point, if I go and try to run like an insecure pod, um, you know, it's going to allow me to run that. So let's say if I do kubectl, I think I have, you know, if I actually, let's see, I do. Yeah, I just have a pod which has no security configuration. It allows, you know, um, to run as root, things like that, which should be blocked, right? So if I just do kubectl run, and let's just try that pod, it will, you know, it should allow me to create that pod because I have no policies or anything configured, right? But that's not good. So what we will do is I'm going to go back to the Kiverno docs. I'm going to say, OK, uh, what do I need to do to apply? So I'll take that same command. And this time, we will apply everything instead of, you know, last time I just removed those policies, right? So again, what it's going to do is it's going to take, um, you know, it's going to run customize against this repo. It pulled down all of these policies, and then it applied them into my cluster. So if I go back and do kubectl get cpol now our cluster policy, I'll see I have a bunch of cluster policies. They're all set to enforce mode, right? So which is good. And now I try to let's try and run. I'm going to delete that pod which I could run before, and we'll try and run it again and see what happens, all right? So if I do create minus f. OK, so it's telling me, hey, this is not good because your pod is running, you know, as in the run is not, it is not set. It showed me there was one violation in this. But let's do something worse, right? So let's go, you know, this is not so bad, but there are other, you know, kind of fields. I'm going to show uh, there's this website called Bad Buds from, from Bishop Fox. Uh, which is a security, you know, kind of group. And there's some very interesting examples of shown all of the things you can do with pods which are misbehaving, right? And they have these nice graphics which show like uh, what's left open. So privilege, host, pick, host path, host network, uh, PC, so you can get to all of the namespaces. So some pretty nasty things uh, in these configurations, right? If I just take, you know, if I want to run this pod, what I can do is 
I'm going to take this command now and try this part on my cluster and see what happens. So immediately you see several things that are telling you now Kiverno is saying that, hey, you know, you can't, host namespaces should not be allowed, host path volume should not be allowed, other things, right? And by the way, you can run, you know, with Kiverno, there's also a command line uh, tool. You can run this outside of a cluster in your CI CD pipeline, even as a git pre, you know, pre-commit webhook. Uh, to make sure that your YAML resources are secure, uh, and all of this can be now blocked, right? So that's where, again, in a couple of minutes, by installing these pod security policies, which you know are already built, part of the Kiverno library, you can turn your clusters into uh, very, very secure clusters. It doesn't impact your existing workloads. So for existing workloads, like if I already had something running, uh, what's going to happen and, and I, is it will produce um, a policy report, which you know is telling me that okay in this case I had 70 for this default namespace. I have 70 rules checks which passed. I have zero failures, so everything's good. If I had that other pod running, it would have shown up as a failure. But right now, since I deleted it, everything looks good, uh, and that's a policy report. Um, by the way, there is, you know, a tool that I, I saw Frank was uh, on the meetup, and Frank has created an awesome tool which can take this policy report, show this in a user-friendly manner, and also kind of, you know, help show that in um, Grafana or Loki uh, if you kind of want to do sort of searches and filtering on that policy report itself. So definitely take a look at that project as well and. Um, you know, if you're using Kiverno or, uh, and, and one other thing to mention is this policy report that Kiverno uses, the format of that is actually a CRD that we're working on in the policy report work or the policy working group in Kubernetes. And the whole idea is to, you know, be able to also let other tools in Kubernetes create reports uh, of this, you know, uh, with the same CRD, right? So any tool, like if you're running Kubebench, um, if it can also, you know, potentially if you write an adapter, you can generate reports in this format. So then you have, you know, a common way of viewing policy reports, whether they're from Kiberno or from other tools. And there is work going on in the community to start writing adapters for Kubebench and Falco uh, to produce those reports in the same format. So it's pretty exciting because that way you get you can get all your reports and through visualization tools you have the power of seeing you know all of this uh, output in one uh, proper place. All right, so that's on pod security policies. Um, you know, happy to answer any questions right now if there are on pod security, or we can go through some other uh, Kiverno features and then come back and do some more Q and A. So anybody, anybody who are joining the session, you can ask question on the chat section as well. And at the end, or if you have the leverage to ask question right now, relative to post security policies, or you can share them in the chat, then at the end, I can ask them to the gym to answer those. Any way you like. I have, I have a question. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, we can. Hi, Don. Hey, great. Hey, my name is Don. So, um. Uh, work for Microsoft in, in ISV space. And this is like perfect for, you know, ISVs and startups, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we like to keep it, you know, keep it kiss, right? Keep it simple, right? right. And, you know, my, my question is, you know, and you kind of reached, you know, you kind of talked about this earlier about, you know, difference between, you know, OPA, because at Microsoft, we got some kind of OPA gatekeeper and things of those right. natures. But, you know, my, my question is um, exactly what someone just talked about, the main difference between, can, can there, you know, Converno and, and Gatekeeper, what, and this is the question that I'm going to get a lot when I, you know, architect this to a lot of small ISVs or whatever, what, what is missing, you know, from Converno right. that, right. you know, OPA or Orego can't give you, and that, that's very important. Now, if Converno sure. can do 90% of, you know, the work that, that I need and, and mm -hmm. that a lot of the ISVs and a lot of the startups don't need, then that's a great, but if it's missing some, you right. know, showstopper, you know, you know, limelight, 
you know, the showtime, you know, then that it's not going to get adopted. You know, everything about o- o- open source OSS is all about adoption. So, you know, of so course. Can, yeah. can, can you, can you, um, yeah, break? absolutely. Yeah. And then I see there's another question also on, on the differences between Kiverno and Gatekeeper. So, and, and there's a question on Kiverno and PSP, right? So we can answer all of those. So, yeah. So, uh, just in terms of adoption, right? So Kiverno, I think, like uh, Tia mentioned in one of the you know, uh, announcements for this session, so we're at about like one million plus downloads already in just a few months, um, and you know there are several folks you know uh, adopting Kiverno who have also used Opa and Gatekeeper in the past, but they're looking for simpler and more easier options to manage, right? So the main difference is in the the way policies are written and the way policies are managed. So with Kiverno, like you, you know, I was showing, and we can take a quick look at some of the examples as we are talking. Uh, policies are, you know, very very much like native uh, to Kubernetes and written uh, in a simple manner, which can just like the same tools you are using to manage your Kubernetes declarations will be used to manage the policies, right? So that is one of the main differences. The thing um, in then Kiverno is, you know, the generic capability that Opa Gatekeeper doesn't provide. But let's talk about what Kiverno cannot do, which was your question, and where would you want to use Opa Gatekeeper? So one example I already shared is if you're using the same policy tool uh, outside of Kubernetes, then you might want to, you know, Consider something like OPA, or there's also from HashiCorp, uh, tools like which policies across multiple systems. If you're only concerned with Kubernetes, then that you know, doesn't matter. Uh, and you could use the tools for outside of Kubernetes, and then you could use Kiverno for it within Kubernetes. Yeah, so uh, that's one thing. The other thing in terms of the policy in itself and the what Kiverno, where there are some limitations today, like if you have complex policies, you need to do a lot of looping and you need to do a lot of custom checks. Kiverno is, you know, uh, not designed for, it's not programming language, but it's definitely like Kubernetes. And there are several features that we have developed and the community is very active. So as features, well, we will continue like enhancing Kiverno, but there might be things that you can do. Uh, and one of, by the way, one of the things we've been thinking about is, should we allow like even adding a programming language like JavaScript or something native, um, you know, to use within Kiverno, but we've pushed back on that because we find simpler ways to solve this, right? Let me show you an example of a pretty complex use case and how Kiverno solves this. Uh, in a fairly uh, interesting manner, right? So very often, one of the limitations with policies is, okay, I want to look up external data. So first of all, you know, being native to uh, Kubernetes, you can look up all sorts of variables from config maps. So you can define, and this is an example of how you can define a config map, and then you can just use that very easily within your policy, right? And you can have some other controller populating that config map. So if you were to do this in OPA, maybe you would you know, call some external system and then get some data. With Kiverno, you would flip around that paradigm, write a controller to you know, populate a config map, and then have the policy check the config map, which is a more Kubernetes native way of doing that, right? But beyond config maps, let's say you want to look, look up things from the Kiverno uh, or from your Kubernetes API server. So Kiverno uses, you know, can do API calls, and then just uses uh, James Path, which is a very popular and you know powerful way of um, you know not just um, iterating through and you know getting JSON type configuration, but also being able to apply functions, apply uh, projections to them, do things like map reduce. So you can write like for this you know this simple example says, hey, I want to query all my pods, and I want to get the length of that. And now I can use this variable count anywhere in my policy, right? So it's a, fair, it's a very recent feature introduced a few months ago, but this is an example of how, again, yes, you could do this in Rego, but the Kiverno, and by the way, about this is if I take this same command and I want to test it, 
uh, I don't need any, you know, I can just do this in uh, from my command line and it shows me that I have one pod running, right? So it's pretty simple, pretty easy to test and you can plug that right in into a Kiberno policy. So it's a very, again, the philosophy is different. There are some things which would be, you might find that in what Kiberno has, like especially when you have to loop across multiple things, it gets a little bit complex and we're looking for ways to solve that. But other than that, like, like you said, about 90% of things, uh, or I would say more than that, maybe like 95% of things you wanna do uh, through policies is fairly straightforward. Uh, and if, you know, it matches, again, the Kubernetes way of doing things. Yeah, that, that makes totally sense. And that's what I was thinking. Like I said, a lot of these small ISVs and startups don't want to have to go there and break down and learn Go or some type of language or something right. like that. Even though that, you know, it's more powerful, but if we're not going to use those features, then, you know, it, it really doesn't matter, right? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, Got yeah, it. and just having to learn, you know, the whole point of Kubernetes is, you know, to take a simple declaration and do some very powerful things inside the system. And that's exactly how we've designed Kiberno is that as an operator, you don't have to write some complex logic. You're providing a simple declaration of describing what you want. And then Kiberno will do the heavy lifting to implement that. Yeah, so the other question was the difference between PSPs and Kiverno. And, you know, so PSPs are a Kubernetes native construct. They are part of the Kubernetes API, which, uh, like we mentioned earlier, are being deprecated in 1.21. Kiverno is a policy engine, so it's not an entry, not a Kubernetes native thing, but it's a CNCF project which you can install uh, in your Kubernetes clusters. And I can add to that, the pod security policy is basically enforce your pod. But with Kiverno, we have the autogen ability that can convert a pod rule automatically to the pod controller's rule. So in this case, whenever you create a, like it's, uh, it's gonna be a less chance you're gonna create a standalone pod in the cluster. So instead, once you, uh, whenever you create the deployment or uh, some other pod controllers, Kiverno will directly apply policies to those resources. And if you're setting the validate policy in enforce mode, you will get the response immediately. Yeah, should we take a look at a quick example of that shooting? Do you wanna? Yep, sure. Uh, let me share my screen. Oops. Can't find the button. Okay, got it. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Can you see my VS code? Yes, I can just see that. Cool. All right, um, so let's just take a, take a look at an, uh, like a simple validate policy. So let me pull up the policy. Let's say this allow um, latest tag. Okay, so here is my policy that is applied to pod, saying that um, whenever you have an image, I don't want to use the latest tag. You have to have an image tag specified, and also it cannot be latest. So this is a single rule that is only applied to pod. But um, like if I apply this policy directly to my cluster, let's say, okay, apply minus F, disallow default, disallow latest tag. Then uh, once I have it applied to my cluster, let's pull up the YAML of that part, of that cluster policy. This allow latest tag. Okay, I already have it. But if you took, and let's pull it in more clean manner. Neat. So 
Um, here you can see this is my original rule that is not quite part. But after you install it to your cluster, keep not automatically converted to cover the pop controllers. So here are the deployment team and set job and stateful set. And beside that, we also have another rule applied to Chrome job. So in this case, if you run, like, uh, I think I have a policy set in the audit mode, but let's change that to the enforce mode. So here I'm going to replace audit to enforce. Let's check that. Oops, it's not applying. Okay, added SQL. Okay, it's not changed. Let's try again. Added to enforce. Okay added successfully. So you see there's one policy that is set in uh, the enforce mode. And now let's say if I create a deployment, like a ghost, and I'm using the uh, latest tag, this, uh, the Kubernetes should uh, block this resource creation, right? So you get the immediate response from the Kubernetes. But with PSP, you, you will find out what happening on, only if you check uh, like your pod is not running and your deployment is not in the desired replicas. So that's one other difference between PSP and Kiverno. Right. Um, do we have any other questions? Yes, we have one from Mag Hello. Magno. And he's asking that is this possible to integrate Kyverno with runtime detection tools such as Falco to enforce some drift detection. I think Jim already talked about uh, some things as well, but. Yeah, so, um, you know, to, the main trigger that Kyverno operates on today is the admission controls. So either any configuration change can be used as a trigger, right? Um, now, in, at runtime, if there's some other things happening, like other events in Falco, right now, yeah, Kiverno is not being triggered on that. Um, I think there was a feature request that recently was entered also to, you know, kind of um, it, it trigger Kiverno policies based on subject access review, which is the security, you know, part of it. So anything going through admission controls or you know the Kubernetes API server, Kiverno as a webhook can trigger and do. We're very interested in exploring you know other if there's a way, like for example, if Kiverno acts as a Falco uh, receiver, are there certain things that it can you know um, uh, handle and do? We don't have that today, but that certainly could be an interesting direction. Uh, to run certain policies based on runtime events. And then we would have to kind of figure out is, okay, what exactly? So Falco can, of course, report alerts and things like that too. So one option would be take, take the Falco event and then produce a policy report, which is what I was mentioning earlier. But then you could also, if you want to apply some checks in Kiverno, maybe there's some interesting use cases there. So if you have some examples in mind, happy to discuss. Um, you know, on the community Slack or things like that and explore more. But yeah, we're looking for those type of use cases and uh, pain points to solve. Cool, I guess, go ahead, Tamil. Hi, thank you. Uh, I have a question like, you know, uh, let's say if you're you know, mentioning at uh, uh, you are going to restrict the latest tag, right? Uh, that will, that should be in a cluster-wide uh, sources or how it should, be, it should be applicable only for or only in space. Uh, if you are deploying the cluster policy, right? We are not for cluster policy. Like uh, uh, you are not going to allow no latest tag. What are the image you are deploying? It is, it will, if it is no option with latest means you are going to you know, mutate, right? It will mutate the uh, uh, rules, right? Uh, it should be applicable now entire cluster or it should be applicable for one space 
how it could be you know, applied that policy. Let's say if you are you know, some other user going to create a namespace and then deploy it, you know, uh, let us tag. Uh, is there any way to restrict the cluster void regarding on one single policy or uh, each and every namespace I need to you know, apply those terms? How it could be actually? Yeah, good question. I can tap one. Um, so here I have a cluster policy, um, but is it really it, it, it is applied to pod, which is a namespace scope resource. So in the uh, match or exclude block of each rule, you can define the matched namespaces. So that can uh, restrict the, po the cluster policy to only apply to a certain namespace. And we also have the namespace scoped policies so that uh, It'll only apply the policy within that namespace. That is, the policy is deployed. So yes, we can restrict the namespace scope to resource. Oh. Oh, thanks. That's good. And you can even do it based on namespace labels. You can there's several different ways you can restrict the scope to which you want your policy to apply. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just. Uh... Uh, just for the last clarification, let's say if you are mentioning the namespace scope, right, Jim? Let's say some other user changes the namespaces, labels, then how would you behave that thing? Well, let's so certain labels, together. right. So if you're managing things using labels, I think the best practice would be to not allow um, users who are, you know, not cluster admins to change those labels, um, things like that, right? So there are examples we have in our policy, you know, repo. Um, for restricting which labels can be changed, things like the, uh, you know. So yes, you would have to make sure that, uh, of course, if you're using labels, that only the right set of users can manage the labels, or you automate that as well. Okay. Cool. So if there's no other questions, I'll proceed with uh, the mutate policy. All right. So um, in the uh, like webinar description, we have a session called uh, like how you can write a Kubernetes policy on your own. So Jim has already showed us a few policy examples, and we have a Kubernetes policies repo that provides more sample policies there. But um, I really want to show you how you can write your own policies uh, like by yourself. So in this case, um, I'm going to write a mutate, a really simple mutate policy for you. So here I already have a policy uh, manifest def defined. So this rule is to match a namespace. And uh, let's say I want to mutate a label for uh, the namespace. So in this case, by the way, Kiverno ha has a structural schema. So it's compatible with Kubcato explain. Whenever you want to search for a tag or a build or uh, the field in the policy, you can use kubcuddle explain like sepo.spec.rules. Let's say I want to check what are allowed tags in the mutate rule. Right? So here you can see immediately we support uh, these four uh, tags, but uh, the overlay and the patches are uh, marked as deprecated. So you may want to use patch strategic, strategic merge and the JSON patch here. So um, what I'm going to use here is the patch strategic merge. And in the mutate block, let's say I have patch strategy mer merge, and then I want to add a label to the namespace. So if you're familiar with a Kubernetes object, here you would have metadata, and then you have labels. And let's just inject a random label here. So this is a simple mutate policy. Let's apply to the cluster and a create namespace to see uh, the mutate in action. Let's say, sorry, kubcuddle apply minus f test dot yaml. So I have this demo mutate create. Let's say the policy. I already have this mutate rule. And if I say create a namespace, let's give it a name. And then if you check the namespace manifest, dash yaml, 
Meet. Then you see the label is injected to the namespace. This is how muted policy works. And of course, you can uh, build a more complex uh, policy with all the like variables or the API calls, the config map lookup we have. But this is really how you can write your own policy in action. So by the way, if you have the Visual Studio Code um, Kubernetes plugin, like it should also show you help and stuff on the in VS Code, right? Yeah, yeah it high. should. Right, if you type in something, it'll automatically right. uh, fill it. Like if you, you maybe if you hover on validation failure action, do you see the? I I think my pass is somehow broken, so it's not showing <laughs> right. the description for me. Okay. Yeah. So if that is once that's uh, if it's talking to your cluster, if that's there, it will actually pull up that description and show what you even mm -hmm. see with kubectl explain. Right. Right. You can use the uh, kubectl explain to check the description of each tag. I really like that. That's great for like service mesh stuff, right? Linkerd. Right. And, you know, Jake. You know, injecting the you know the mesh in for like especially for like Linkerd, right? So if anyone you have the policies that every, every pod needs to be meshed up, right? So you can have this mutating pod in it, right? So I'm really impressed, man. I just, <laughs> this is good stuff, man. And you, you guys, whoever worked on this, your guys did a great job, you know, because it's just simple to the point. And, and to be honest, is really what anyone should need just for 80, good 90% of everyone, right? I mean, right. You know, this, and 90% is, is a win. So good job, you know. Thank you. Yeah, and um, I think um, in, in terms of um, like any of the use cases you're talking about, if there are, you know, sample policies you need or just some ideas you want to discuss, please, uh, you know, on our, um, on the Kubernetes Slack, there's a Kiverno channel. So that's the easiest way to, you know, kind of reach us or even on the our GitHub page, there's a discussion section. So we're always kind of looking for, you know, sample policies to add and certainly interested with service mesh, what we can do. Yeah, Jim, can you, sorry for the interruption. Can you please post your you know, Slack channel right now? Discussion. Yeah, let me pull that up and I'll post the link and maybe shooting if you want to show the GitHub page and the, you know, where we can also have the discussion section and Can, can we make sure we get those slide that slide you have that's like very important to me because you know when i explain it to someone those slides is like very important absolutely yeah we'll we'll send out the slides yes i posted the slack channel link and yeah. you know so it's just on the kubernetes slack if you look for kiverno it's there Yeah, and also we have a monthly community meeting and you can join our mailing list to get the invite. All right, um, for I wanna quickly show you the ability of generate uh, for Kiverno. So here uh, I have a generate policy, which is to automatically generate the network policy whenever a new namespace is created so here I have uh, some uh, namespaces to be excluded, but overall this policy is to generate a network policy. And here is my default definition for that policy. Oops. Broken, let me pull up my terminal. Right, and let's do Let's apply this policy. And network policy and check that. Okay, so I have policy deployed to the cluster already. And then if I create a new namespace, let's say test generate. And if you check and get the net poll, of that namespace 
you will see the default network policy is generated for you. This is the ability of generate. And um, I want to, I also want to quickly show you the exporter created by Frank. So this is pretty awesome uh, too. So you can see here, I already have a few policy reports for uh, each namespaces. And um, what Frank does is that um, he built this policy reporter so that you can get an overview of your uh, policy report or the cluster policy report. And you can also send this information to a different targets like uh, Loki, Elasticsearch, or Slack, et cetera. But what awesome here is that it allows you to bring up this policy reporter in the developed environment. Say, I don't have any monitoring tools installed. I don't have Grafana. I don't have Prometheus, but you can bring up that bring that up in the standalone mode. So I'm gonna quickly install it in my cluster. So here it's just a ham command to install the policy report reporter. Okay, so now I have it. Let's check policy reporter. Let's do Okay, so now the uh, all the pods is running. And then I'm going to use this kubectl forward command to forward the traffic to my local browser. And if I open that up, so here you have the overview of the policy report. Here are my namespaces. And also uh, here are the detailed result of the policy application. And then if you click on the policy report, um, this is only for the single policy, but if you select more policies, it'll show, show different results for you. Right, so here I can see all the failed rules, and here are my past rules. This is pretty awesome, and thanks, thanks, Frank. Yeah, thank you. This is fantastic. All right, um, that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, do we have any other questions or discussion? So <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, I'm really excited what you showed tonight uh, for the who are watching to us and everyone who are attending the session, they send out a note for you. So you can join the Kaiwarno Slack channel Governor community, anything you want. And uh, you can also join the uh, Slack and we send out the uh, slides and all those stuff as well. But, and uh, this is going to be the first session that we're putting on with the Kaiwarno team. And later on, we try to find the best place so we can do a, some deeper dive session as well. As we've seen that in the Kaiwarno next releases, there were very tremendous stuff that is going on and Kaiwarno is about to reach 800 GitHub star, 1 million download as Jim is talking about and there is so much uh, popularity gaining a very small amount of time and competing as some giants projects like OPA that's doing for a very long time and competing with them and it's been a very wonderful journey for Kaiwarno team and wish you best of luck what you did on. And if you have any more question, we have still two or three minutes more left. We can ask those. And if you have more question, you can join this Kaiwarno Slack channel and you can send out a tweet to Jim or me. And uh, if you have some more question, or we can send out it on Twitter or anywhere you want. And Jim, can you tell about uh, for what the roadmap of Kaiwarno is going forward? Yeah, so several, several, uh, you know, very powerful and big features coming. Uh, so one of the things that shooting is working on is the HA design, how to run multiple, especially for background tasks, how to scale up Kiverno in larger clusters. So that is something that we have targeted for 1.4, which is our next major release. Uh, and then also several, you know, other, you know, improvements to generate policies. Um, in for the language itself, we're adding some new capabilities that we're looking through and, you know, specifically around more complex structures and how to easily, you know, like apply custom James Pat functions 
like regex and string comparisons, things like that. So more and more, you know, like that, even as we've talked about, that 10% or 5% graph is rapidly shrinking as we kind of come across use cases and can help solve them in simpler ways. So thank you very much uh, for Jim and shooting for today's session. And we're looking forward to doing this some, another uh, session as well with, of Skyverno team. And uh, tonight we'll learn how this Skyverno fit into the Kubernetes system as well. And it's going to be a really simpler approach for you if you want to adopt that compared to some other project as well. And we have tons of thanks to uh, thumbs up to, I think I highly recommend everybody to thumbs up to the Kita project as well. And if you like their project, really go for it and go give, a, give it a star. So we can shift them that we are really happy for their work. And hopefully when we catch up with Jim and shooting in two weeks or month time again with a deeper dive session. And thank you everyone who joining. And this session is going to be recorded. You can watch it later anytime, as many times you want. And thank you everyone for joining and hope, uh, hopefully have a great weekend coming up. All right. Thanks, I am. Thanks for organizing. Thanks. 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 Uh, let's